and welcome to another episode of Field Day Fun. I'm your host, Drew Burris. I'm going to take you along with this ride and introduce you some of my Field Day friends, and they can share their expertise of what they are doing for this year, no matter the platform of how they're teaching, whether in-person, virtual, or hybrid. Today, I have a special guest, Mr. Jason Leach. Jason, how are you today? Doing great. It's an honor to be with you tonight. I appreciate it, man. I've I've followed you for many years. When I first started Twitter, I've gotten a lot of games from you that I've uh, presented to my students, and they love every single one of them. So I'm I'm very thrilled that you're with me here tonight. Glad to be part. I'm glad you asked. All right, man. Well, let's go ahead and get started with our five fun facts. We're going to start with number five. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you teach, and where you teach. All right, again, my name is Jason Leach, and I teach at Independence Elementary School. It's in Keller ISD. That's, um, Keller is a northern suburb of Fort Worth. So in te- I teach in Texas, so DFW area. I'm on the Fort Worth side, so I'm Fort Worth side's better. You know, I like Dallas, but Fort Worth side's better. And uh, just a northern suburb from that. I uh, teach uh, K through four. I've been there, uh, this is my 15th year there. I had the honor of opening the school back then, and this is my 28th year teaching overall. Wow. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of time. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's good you're still going, especially during a year like this, man. Awesome. Awesome. So let's go to number four. What wow. is your teaching platform this year? So far, a couple of my guests have either been in person or they've been virtual or hybrid. Tell us a little bit about how your school year has been going. Yeah, I've been in person since August from day one. We've had about uh, 60% of our students that have been in person, so 40 that have been remote. And then um, our school uh, year works on nine weeks. And so every nine weeks, uh, t- uh, parents are given the option of they can have those who have been remote can go to in-person or vice versa. And I think right now we're close to 75 to 70 to 75% back in person. So it's kind of grown each nine weeks. Um, yeah, I have about in my grade, again, I K through four. So I have two to three classes in each grade level that I see every other day. Uh, second, third, and fourth, I do see at uh, certain times three classes a day. And that means um, that I do have help from other co cur teachers. I have, uh-huh. um, so it depends on the nine weeks. My music teacher, art teacher, and uh, theater teacher have all been in helping teach PE lessons, and they've done a fantastic cool. job helping cool. out so we can keep these classes kind of separate. Um, so they've had to come in and become – I. You know, I call them um, coach before, you know, so yeah, they've done great. They've done tremendous. Um, as far as equipment wise, we've been, um, I started off the year where nobody could share. Right. And uh, what I had to do was once a piece of equipment was used, I had to wait 24 hours before it could be used again. Yeah. So that meant Every sing, every grade level is on a different skill or different type of unit. And so, but then as we progressed, um, principal had the classroom teachers um, put their their classes in cohorts. So a particular class has five cohorts. Each cohort is three to four students. So within that cohort, they can share equipment, and that was a game changer. I was probably about. I'd say three, four weeks in. And so I was able to lessen the amount of equipment I was had to use at one time, still kept the every grade level in kind of different units, or if I had enough, I could spread it out a little bit. So it, that being in cohorts, that, that helped a lot. Gotcha. Yeah, that equipment rule, I know at the beginning of the year, I was just trying to pick my brain as much as I could to think of things they could do without really using anything. Um, that was... That was a bit of a challenge. I know I came up with a couple of things and shared them uh, on Twitter, which some of them turned out pretty good. Um, but yeah, that, that whole equipment thing, we've kind of gotten a little bit better to where they're sharing and they're in the cohorts and then straight to the pool afterwards to clean them. So, oh, yeah. The, my, my, my equipment's never uh, been cleaner or smelled uh, so good. Yes. <laughs> a cleaning solution that they gave us to use smells pretty good. And so I'm happy to spray it. <laughs> It's never been cleaner. 
<laughs> yeah, because if you could think about it, it's probably some of the teachers all around have before this all happened, never used to clean it. Yeah. So, yeah it's all shiny and smelling good. Yeah. I kind of hope that going to the future, I know uh, restrictions are starting to come off a little bit our school and I'm not sure about next year yet, but I kind of hope they kind of give us this cleaning solution to keep yeah. on for a little bit. Because That'd be nice. <laughs> all right great so let's go to number three now we we're all in the same boat last year um i did witness from social media that you were involved in a group uh doing some activities uh so for last year's field day why don't you talk about that and was there any success from what you did with your students uh, yeah, I mean, last year, you know, when we all had to be at home, we had a couple of brainstorming different ideas, and I was coming up with videos for uh, my students to do, and we have a Facebook group for my school, mm -hmm. and I was just trying to connect with my kids as much as I could, and my principal is great. They, he said, just keep it simple for right now. Do what you can. We ended up having a um, working through one little platform to send kind of activities through that they could do for the week right but when it came to field day I, I was you know i'm not saying this because i'm open trainer i love that the op national open field day activities came out oh yeah uh, that was just a great resource to be able to go to mm -hmm. I got the, all the information out to my students and um my students loved it and parents loved it got a lot of positive feedback a lot of great pictures and videos of the family participating in all these activities so it was very glad about the open and national open national field day that came out that really helped my students still feel a part of doing a field day and it, it not only helps students i think it saves a lot of teachers yeah. too because uh, you know that that i remember when that was announced i, I seen that i thought this is this is pretty neat and all the stuff that you guys came up with kudos goes to yeah. every single one of you i mean i remember watching the opening ceremony video yeah. I was like, would you look at this? This is amazing here. Yeah, I yeah. loved all the stuff Mike Morris put out. I mean, he's, yeah. and he had a lot of yeah. the same mindset that I did was when I was looking around for this, just activities for him to do in general, uh -huh. I just looked around my house and I, I wanted anything that I knew they would have. Like, okay, not everybody's going to have a soccer ball or tennis ball. I just, right. well, that's why we did the socks and all that. So I just, and I was very glad that they focused on their activities on basically what kids would have in their house. Yeah. I, uh, with ours last year, I, I sent out my own thing where they got to design their own stations and send it mm -hmm. into me. And then I sent out the open ones and I think I got a better response from the open uh, games that I sent out to them, but yeah, they, and just making sure that, you know, they had that equipment at home, but yeah, that, I feel like that was just, that was just an excellent idea last year by them. Yeah. So great. So with last year in the book and moving forward, you said you're in person. So can you tell us, I know you've spoke to me a little bit about it, but for number two, what is this year's field day going to look like for you and your students? Well, I want to back up a little bit. I haven't had a regular field day in four years now. Oh, man. Uh, one year we had a rain out. Oh, yeah. And so it was a modified indoors the next year, we had a school-wide stomach bug that went around oh, and wiped man. out like 150 kids sick that week. And so we did a modified. And then so last year was obviously COVID. Right. So, yeah. And this year, I still wanted to do something. And I was, I was brainstorming back in January, February, just kind of what can I do? And for us older people thinking about who watched TV in the seventies, remember ABC having the battle of the network stars. Yes. Yes. And, and I just thinking about that. And so I came up with battle of the Maverick stars <laughs> so because it, I'm still kind of under the equipment restrictions. Um, I'm keeping it in class in their cohorts and stuff like that. But every with kind of like my format with my other field days, is what they do is they work together as a class in a certain event and they earn points. Mm -hmm. So every event's probably got like a five to seven minute time limit. And during that time, they're in rows. So each row's earning points. And at the end of that um, time limit, they all four or five rows will add up their points together and that's their total. And I planned, you know, just during, we, we seem for 45 minutes. So during that 45 minutes, and I have two or three classes, we're just going to kind of rotate 
between two to maybe see um, four activities and just see how many activities. I have a whole list. And we're just going to see how many we can get through, make sure everybody does the same. And then at the end, it's going to be about a month long. I originally put that. I may be going, going, be looking at Twitter because I've used all my games up and I'm going to be going to Twitter going, what else is there? But I uh, made it four le- weeks just because I know we have some state testing in there that I'm not going to be able to see the kids. But it's just basically them working together. And that's my focus is I want the kids working together, cheering on each other, earning points. And then I am created a uh, Google Sheets where I'm going to mm-hmm. keep a scorecard and I'm going to share that with my parents. So they, it's kind of like the standings, like go opening up and see who's in first, second, third place at the That's time. Cool. And That's really as cool. we go through, they can kind of track it and um, posting videos and pictures on our um, my PE with a uh, Facebook page with my school. So parents can still feel a part because they've always been a big part of my field day uh, in the volunteer row, helping the role in helping. Um, run these events and so right. I, excuse me, I still want them to feel a part and um so that's kind of how it's going to work just kind of just classes working together i think some of our viewers are really going to like that idea it's not just going to be field day it's going to be field month yeah it's and, gonna, and you're going to have it in class that's awesome jason that's yeah, really cool. i've got some of your games in there i know oh uh, but what a minute the I don't I can't remember. I know one hits me off the top of the head is that the kick and catch. I really oh, like yeah. kick the yeah. uh, ball off the and so that's gonna be every time they can catch it, you know, that's gonna be a point. And so you've shared a lot of great stuff, and I know there's some others in there I'm gonna be doing, but that's in that's one I'm gonna be using. I know I met I mentioned it to you, I think back in the fall. I remember when I seen you had your students play one of my games in your class, and I mean I had to I had to stop and just kind of take a minute to myself. Cause I'm like, here's a guy I've watched for years on Twitter. And, you know, I have had my students do his games. And then when you told me your students are doing my get that really, I mean, that, that was a good feeling. I thought, you know, we, maybe, we do more than just one. We do several of your games. Oh, that's, that's that's all the stuff that you share out there. Ditto, man. I appreciate everything you've done as well for the time that you've been teaching too. All right. That's awesome. Yeah. I know a lot of people, I know I'll even be watching for that on social media when that comes out. Yeah. I'll be posting some stuff and keeping stay. I'll, I'll be posting to see uh, how things are going, but I, I, I know the kids are going to be excited. All right. Yep. So let's go to the last one, that number one or favorite one that we have for all the guests, especially what was your favorite field day activity, either participating in it or creating it? Now, I know you said you've been doing this a while, so got to give you a little bit of, of a second to think here. Which was your favorite one that you've uh, done? Well, you know, 28 years, you do a lot, of different, <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of different formats, a lot of different activities. And um, this two, I'll mention two real quickly. One okay. is, you know, all the kids love stuff with water. Oh yeah, and yeah. Um, one of them is I, I, you know, it's changed names over the years. But the latest one is SpongeBob, and you get those yellow car wash sponges. You know those big sponges. And, yep. and I've had people um, just draw out SpongeBob on the sponge, and what they do is the students again. My all I do is they're in line, so I have four different rows and. They're kind of within partners. And so you dip the sponge in water and you hold it up and they put their heads together with the sponge in between. And then they go down um, I, 10 yards maybe and <laughs> at some point and bringing it back. So again, the whole time the wet, the water's just dripping on them. Right. A lot of great feedback from um, students on that. They just love it. You call it sponge. It's whatever you call it. You get right. some hyper, but SpongeBob's been good. And the other one is just so simple. I've used tires um, many years in field day mm-hmm. and, and I've called it NASCAR it, it, I'm different, uh, you know, themes. I love themes kind of like you. I love having themes and you, I can call it different things, but having the tires and they push the tires down to a bucket of bean bags, put a bean bag in the tire and roll it back. Oh, it's, yeah. it. it's so simple. And it's, I've, I've called it many different things. This year it's called NASCAR because nice. all my tires are painted. I need to put numbers on them. <laughs> but, 
um, this simple of just rolling the tire. It's neat with, uh, you know, so I've been doing this 10 years, so not, not really close, but, um, you know, most of the activities I do, I'll usually use that one certain piece of equipment and just kind of switch the name in a little bit. And yeah. the student, I mean, water is definitely one. I've used tires a couple of times, sponges, uh, the splash balls, use those a lot, you know, and the students yeah. really like that. Well, you know, there was one activity that you did last year that I, I died of laughter when I've seen it. And I kind of modified it a little bit. I know I asked you for permission on it, if okay. I could change the name and change it around. So let's, let's take a look at one of these you did last year. Shoe Fly is today's game that I sent my students to play at their house in their front yard or the backyard. Here is what you're gonna need. What you're gonna need is a variety sizes of towels. Now I have beach towels and they're gonna be worth one point. I have a couple of regular size bath towels and they're gonna be like two points. I have some hand towels, they're gonna be three points. And I have some washcloths that are gonna be worth four points. You're also gonna need a plastic grocery sack and probably adult size tennis shoe. With my dominant hand, I'm going to grab the handle of the sack and I'm going to toss underhand and try to score a point. Oh, and I got a one pointer there. And then if I was playing someone, they could go and we could take turns to see which one could get to 20 points or more or whatever point value you want. It's up to you. Shoe Fly is just another game you could teach your students to play in their front yard or backyard with items that they may have laying around their house. Genius. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably those that I just looked right back and I probably put the shoe in there and then thought of towels. And now I'm, uh, I'm writing that down because that's something I could add on to the, <laughs> this now, year. I could not remember. Was that a part of your open games that you did or was that one you just created? That's just one I created that's to I get, okay. get, that I just sent. In. I, that's kind of that I shared on uh, Twitter, but I also put on that Facebook page going, hey, kids, you need you need from activity time because I wanted my kids right. still to be up and moving while they're home. And just, again, looking for stuff that they would have, towels, hand towels, and just I'm sure everybody's got a lot of those plastic oh, sacks. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Um, but see, when, when I was doing my field day last year, I think – I had that all set up and I was thinking, well, you know, what if I tie the bag to the laces and kind of make like a, a parachute, yeah. you know, and, and that's in week, that's the parachute. And, you know, I know that got a lot of hits. I even had these brothers that sent me a video from Canada. They were wow. just playing, they were just playing for fun and they had a little actual score timer on their video running. It, it was just kind of neat watching the, it just go crazy on the internet. Yeah, it, it's amazing what you can just do with stuff around the house that, you know, kids would have fun with. Or, you know, you give the kid, empower kids to come up with something. They will find stuff to do with the items that they have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, and it was very tough, you know, at the beginning trying to figure out what we could do because we didn't know if they had that at home. Yeah. yeah the whole innovative idea is really neat, really neat. All right, Jason, can you tell our viewers maybe some information on how they can get a hold of you if they have any questions? Sure. You can find me on Twitter at jkleach01, that's L-E-A-C-H-01, or you can email me at jason.leach at kellerisd.net. All right. Yeah. And, and if viewers, he is a very popular man on Twitter. He's got a lot of followers he has a big and nice gym too. That gym yeah, is that gym is unreal. That gym and the, the projector setup is what I'm jealous of. I'm yeah. just, it's it's unreal of how it's decorated with all those posters and yeah, it's it's a really nice setup. Well, really I'm very nice. thankful for Captain Pete that makes a lot of great right. stuff yep. to uh, to put up on the walls. Yep. Oh, yeah. A lot of his artwork's all over there. Yeah. All right. Well, Jason, I really appreciate you coming out and doing this for me tonight. I appreciate you asking. Not a problem. Not a problem. And, you know, uh, no matter what your style is for this year, just make sure that you have fun. And I'll see you next week with another guest. Um, you know.